of wind way more than predicted gonna get into this uh, lock here gonna be uh, quite something and uh, welcome back on board I'm uh, motoring in a kind of a special place uh, right now this whole area is called the Bodden Bay you can see here behind me maybe I hope it's visible on the screen but there are a lot of uh, poles sticking out of the water and that's because uh, I'm motoring right now because I'm going as you can see straight into the wind it's a very narrow kind of winding path between these uh, what we call bots and a vault is basically a very shallow sand island that it actually becomes an island twice a day so for about five hours it's an island and then for about seven hours it's underwater and then about five hours it's an island again and so uh, this whole area is just strewn with those type of islands and uh, my boat especially is quite deep and so I cannot get into any other marinas here unless on a high tide so uh, I have basically a, well it's about a four hour motor to this particular island and I have a five hour tidal window, so I'm hurrying my ass uh, down this uh, narrow path to get to the island of Tessel to uh, prepare because hopefully the day after tomorrow there should be really nice wind window to uh, do my first sea trial with, uh, with my adjusted, with my newly uh, you know, uh, changed adapted uh, boat to, you know, to test all the, all the systems actually at sea, which I'm really looking forward to. So uh, yeah, going to Tessel, gonna stay there tomorrow for one day, gonna explore a little bit. And then the day after, hopefully, I'll be sailing uh, back to, uh, not to Amsterdam, but to uh, Scheveningen, which is basically a full day uh, uh, trip, maybe about 18 hours or something. We'll see, like, we'll see how long it takes. But uh, 
yeah, that's uh, what I'm doing here. Of course, I'm uh, taking you along, but uh, for now, it's a pretty simple motor trip. So The tides here are absolutely ferocious. You can see it in this buoy. You can see, like it looks like a pretty calm sea, but actually, when you look at this buoy, you can see how hard the tide is pulling here. It's just an absolute meal storm. So I'm uh, motoring right now at 10.1 knots. Yeah, it's going 9.4 till 10.1, which is completely ridiculous. But that's because the tide is like three, three and a half knots maybe in here. So it's pretty crazy. And uh, the main uh, thing for me is to get into this uh, marina because there's a pretty narrow entrance. Uh, like the docking and everything is fine there, but uh, because the current is always rushing by there, at uh, the final moment when you kind of turn into this marina and then get from the strong current you know, flowing sea through this uh, thing is always a little bit uh, dicey, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm motoring at nine knots here, which is completely ridiculous, but look at where I'm aiming the nose of my boat in order to be able to enter this uh, marina entrance, because I'm literally being swept by this strong current, which is about three knots at that point. So it's literally just pushing me, uh, you know, past the entrance. And I really have to put all the uh, effort and, you know, aiming my nose way higher than the actual entrance to be able to fight this current to get into this marina entrance. So uh, once I'm into the marina, uh, I uh, you know take a little time to uh, prepare my fenders and my lines. And uh, you asked me to to show you you know me actually docking the boat. So of course it's different every time depending on the wind, etc. But in this particular case, I uh, I feel the whole thing. So basically, uh, you can see here the the scaffold that I'm going to. Uh, dock against. Now the wind is coming uh, from my back so basically what I'm doing is uh, because of the the length of the pontoon well basically the whole situation I decide to dock my boat on the uh, on the line that is on the middle uh, cleat of my boat and basically uh, what happens is I just uh, uh, park my boat really close uh, to the dock and then I can simply step off take the line that I already prepared and, uh, and basically stop and hang my boat on that with the wind gently kind of pushing it further into the dock, so that's fine. And uh, then once I have it on one line and it's basically not going anywhere, I can uh, uh, secure uh, the front where I already, uh, already have two uh, loops ready there. So I can just detach uh, one of the loops and just put this over the, the front cleats on the flounder there. And uh, then I can just take my time uh, securing the rest of the boat. So that's how I did it in this particular case. And so, tomorrow is the big day uh, that I'm sailing back from here, from the island of Texel to uh, Scheveningen, past the Dutch uh, coast. But uh, the current, the, the tidal uh, current here uh, is very strong in both directions. It's uh, somewhere between two and a half and three and a half knot. If yesterday is any indication, it's uh, more around three and a half right now. So um, that means that uh, optimum calculus, it will be a trip of about 10 to 12 hour sail. And uh, I have to leave here around midnight. So in the pitch dark, uh, you know, on my own, which is always a little bit exciting. And um, so I'm about to go uh, outside because it's still light right now. It's around uh, six o'clock in the evening. So I'll leave in about six hours or so from now. And uh, after this, we're going to take uh, a nap and kind of, uh, you know, have a, have a good meal and kind of prepare my energy for the night sail. But um, first, a big trip. And I wanted to show you because I have some precious cargo on board because uh, today I was uh, kind of taking a little trip around the island, did a little bit of a hike, saw some wild horses, which was cool. 
So I'm hiking right now, being really quiet. And look, there's some wild horses down there. So cool. And I found this. It's rather large, actually it only just fits in the cabin here, it's very high. And uh, bought this, going to, uh, I'm going to bring it home. So that'll be my precious cargo that I'm uh, transporting uh, you know, back over the sea uh, to the mainland. So um, yeah, really looking forward to the trip. Now let's go outside, have a little uh, check and I'll uh, take you with me for that. So basically just uh, you know, making a final check that's, uh, that's uh, standard for my light because I have special light with me when I'm sailing at night so that I can uh, see the front deck better and have a good look at the sails. Checking my lines. There. Uh, oh yeah, this is kind of interesting. So I already took down uh, my lazy jacks on one side because I'm going to be on one tack the whole time. I'm going to be on port tack, and so I already took away my port lazy jacks uh, so that it's easier on my own to put out the sail. Because um, you know, when I when I put myself into the wind a little bit, um, I just make the sail fly to the right direction, and then I don't have to worry of it, you know, getting stuck in my lazy jacks. So I always take one side down when I'm uh, sailing on my own, which is kind of a nice trick. Uh, well, everything here looks good. I already have reef one in my main. Now, I've got about 15 knots, so probably I don't need the first reef, but uh, better safe than sorry. So uh, until I actually know how much wind is out there, especially on my own, it's much easier to take out a reef if I want to, uh, than to have to go on the fore deck and to put in a reef, which is doable, but I'd rather not if I can avoid it. So I start with one reef and then we'll see. Everything else is uh, looking good. Um, oh yeah, I have my, uh, so this is my uh, uh, boom preventer, so uh, that's one thing that I'm still going to move now to the other side. So, that is my boom preventer here uh, installed. So basically just, uh, you know, runs from a thing to a block and then to my carpet there. So I can, uh, you know, once the boom is out, I can tighten it there and then I have the boom kind of stuck between the chute and uh, the preventer here so that my boom is really steady. It also stops it from kind of shaking around, transfers the power of the wind a little bit more efficiently, I think. And uh, as far as that, the uh, outside is ready. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Kind of still hold the boat, you know. Uh, I'm going to get rid of... Um, that one because it's mostly going to be just this one holding us going in there and uh, then once I've done that I'm going to get rid of that one and the whole boat kind of come in there then when I have everything loose I'm just going to give it a slight push hop on board and just uh, pull it out on the engine and just kind of pivot it here on the pen. Good morning I mean really good morning it's right now actually 11:45 or so um, and it's absolutely pitch black outside as you'll see in a second uh, but this is the ideal time, well in about an hour is the ideal time for me to leave. So I'm uh, slowly going to do all my pre-flight checks and make sure that everything is okay. I think that, yeah, the GoPro is pretty much only picking up a few lights, but uh, yeah, these are the boats around me right now. I'm seldom rain. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, it's really, really pitch black. Uh... So, step one, get out of this marina. So, I made it out of the marina. I don't think that you can see anything, but uh, there you can see the light of my mast. It's absolutely, you can see a little bit uh, a city there, an elder in the distance. Other than that, it's absolutely completely dark. With the human eye, I can just make out the horizon, but it's super, super dark. And um, I think about an hour more until the moon rise, and then things should be a little bit more easy. Good morning. Look at this. Beautiful, colorful sunrise. Sailing 
downwind. The motor is on because I'm charging my batteries a little bit because the autopilot is really working its ass off, so I had to recharge a little bit. But uh, very nice. I, I only have a little bit of Genoa out actually, like a bit of a Gibbsworth. We have the moon there also. How nice. That. But uh, still going nice, uh, 6.2 knots. So no need to go any faster. Okay, I want to take my time here. The trip is almost over. Beautiful waves. Not too big, nice size. About one meter, I guess. Look at those colors. Stunning. Look at that moon! <laughs> wow! Oh, that's so pretty! Good morning! <laughs> Hard to stand, it's so bouncy. There, far in the distance, oh, you can't see Tesla anymore, it's already too far away. But oh, the color of this morning wow, it's so pretty! You can see how bouncy it is. I'm having trouble standing, I really have to hold on here those waves very steep but nothing too crazy it's ice cold really 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 cold I think it's about zero degrees probably So I'm going back in my hole because uh, in there I have the heater on. So I got the, got my little bed there, right behind the door, nice and warm. And uh, since there's nothing ahead of me, so I'm going to set a timer again for about 20 minutes. Should put me real close there. So I'm going to go back in the heated hole for 20 minutes, and then I should almost be at the destination. Here, let me show you. Putting my gloves back on. <laughs> so here we go. So I open this here. To do. So here I got my little head stretcher. Oh, so nice and toasty in here. I hope you can see this. Maybe maybe it's too dark in here. I don't know. But so I got my little window out here. And now I'm gonna close the hatch here. Close it up. Get the other Yep. Oh, oh, that's so much better. So here I got my little window, and I can see outside. And uh, oh, I can have some lights in here. I can actually show you. So, here are my feet, put some different stuff in here, so yeah, and I'm going to close the lights again, and I'm going to close my eyes also for about 20 minutes. Ooh, the sky keeps being painted very beautifully, and I'm just bulking about from left to right. Colors. Oh my! Got this little—I don't know what it is—government floating thing, like a digger or something, right in my path. So a little bit of a sidestep just to get past there. 
me show you the rest of the So you can see this is how my hand is. Sun is about to rise. And there, I don't know if you can see it in this, you can see all this kind of uh, factories, uh, smokestacks. And uh, somewhere after there is my entrance back into land We're nearly there <laughs> that was a big one Not really anything to be done about it. It's very choppy and bumpy in here. It's doable, but oh my god. It's really fast and everything inside really good. By the way, if you're wondering what that is, that is my uh, light. And I can aim at different things in the door. It's like a lead light. there every once in a while the wind kind of poofs out and then it picks up a little bit again I can think I can see the two breakers that I'm aiming for right ahead of me it's too small for you guys to see but it looks like I'm perfectly on course now passing this government vehicle Ah, oh, there's the moon again. Look, 
right behind the sail there. <laughs> wow. So we've got a sunrise right there and a moonset right behind the sail there. Wow. Then I finally reached the breakers of Eimuiden, which even though they are about, I don't know, maybe 400 meters apart, the wild situation there with the water, the current and the huge bar that you have to cross there always makes it extremely dicey to steer in there with just chaos in the water everywhere and drift pulling you every which way. So you can kind of see the excitement here as I'm finally making it home. <laughs> 